I'm going to start with, with Emma Davis, who can't be here this, this morning. But she sent me a message last night to say, I haven't had a chance to sit down and write anything properly, and I won't be there in the morning, pending Anna's PCR test, but I have many ha happy memories of Springwood. From my, this is what she wrote, from my first email to a friendly pastor, and the first time I came through the door to see, hear somebody calling my name and seeing the smiling faces of the judge waving to us. I'm grateful for the Zoom house groups and Lynn's Bible bag in a bag packs helped us through lockdown. The last few years of my personal life have been difficult and I don't know how I would have got through it without the support, prayers, text messages and meals provided by the Springwood family. I believe God led me to Springwood and I'm so glad he did. I believe God led me to Springwood and I'm so glad he did. I know you, you've done your running order for tomorrow and you may not have time to read this out, but if nothing else, I wanted to let you know, Lynn, we appreciate all that you've done. Bless you, Emma. Bless you. First of all, I'd like to say thank you for everything that you did in 2018. And just to say thank you for you and Lynn, what you did for me in 2018, and for the lovely couple what met me the following Sunday, and for just everything what you've helped me through since 2018, since I lost my lad, and walking through those doors on that Sunday. Thank you. I just want to say mm. thank you. I'm going to make it nice and brief. I don't want to... I just want to say thank you for everybody what made me feel so at ease on that Sunday. That's what I want to say. And God bless you and then and those that young couple what helped me get through it. But especially, uh, you, you know who you are, and I'm going to shut up now and let anybody else take it. Because John would have said, there she goes. Shut up now, Carol, and get to us. Let everybody else have some peace. And that's what I'm doing. And thank you, and God bless you all. Bless you, On behalf of me and John and the wee bit of cat. It's, uh, no, I mean, we, we've, been, uh, we've been coming here a little, a little while now. Um, that's just maybe 10 years. Um, we lived on Oakwood at the time. Um, we uh, we've both been to church as, as children, but uh, Sarah and I did not know the Lord. And uh, you know, very similar as has already been said by uh, by two other testimonies. We we were invited here uh, when we were deciding how to raise our child. You know, whether we wanted to teach her, you know, the scripture that we'd learnt as children, and we walked through those doors. Uh, and whilst you know. The faces may have changed. The, the, the community that we met was phenomenal. Um, and it was the first time in my life that I'd been able to share my life with a family of people where you could, uh, you could be yourself completely. I mean, I didn't, there was no show, there was no guard. You know, when, when good things happened to us, people celebrated with us, and when bad things happened, people commiserated with us. And I, I've not enjoyed that with a community of people uh, before then or since, except, you know, this group here. Um, it has been a tremendous privilege. Um, and it is in no small part the reason why the Lord God chose to save Sarah and I, you know, in the years that followed. Um, and, you know, I, I pray dearly to God that we are raising four children, you know, and that will be passed on and that the saving grace of this this church, this community, will last well beyond uh, Sarah and I. Thank you. <laughs> so I started coming here um, about 10 years ago, and I had a background in church, but I didn't like how I'd seen other Christians behave, and it kind of put me off church completely. And I wasn't in a great place when I started here. Um, my dad had just died. Um, uh, but previous to that, for the Eight years before that, as a family, even though my husband isn't a Christian, every Christmas Eve we used to come to the Christmas Eve service here because we wanted to bring our children to it, you know, just, and it wasn't because we wanted anything Christian, we just wanted something nice on Christmas Eve that we could start a tradition with, so we, we did that. And I started coming ten years ago, um, and I wasn't a Christian at the time, it has been a slow process. But within a year of starting, 
come in here within a few months. One of the biggest things happened in my life, and that was that my daughter, while we were on holiday, got blinded. And the whole of our church prayed while we were in, while we were in Spain. And I had people praying all over the country, and, and people were praying in this church on a Sunday morning. And we got told that her sight would probably never return, that she would probably never see again. And she was three years old, and she'd been transferred to um, Barcelona Hospital. And I kept getting emails from people from church. And for me, that was one of the biggest things, well, it was the biggest thing in my life at that point, that my daughter was blind and we didn't think it would, we couldn't get a fitness to fly, we couldn't get home. But everybody from, I, I, from my church family just prayed. They messaged us, they rang us in Spain while we were at the hospital. Um, and after 10 days, and I remember really specifically at midday, every, I, I told everyone was in our church was paying for us. And at 12 o'clock that day, we were, it was one of the last days that we should have been in, um, in Spain at that point. And we were told that um, she probably wouldn't see again. And we went out on a boat because we had another daughter who was, had, had a miserable 10 days of a holiday. And... Um, we had our own miracle, she, she started to be able to see it. By the time we actually got back to England, and people were praying for us the whole journey home, and the next morning we, we got an emergency appointment to see at the hospital, and everyone was praying for us that day, and they said her sight was back to being perfect. And he wasn't a Christian, and I was, I was explaining that everyone in my church had been praying for him, and he said, well, I don't believe in miracles, but this is the nearest miracle I've ever seen in my life, um, because she shouldn't be able to see at all. And it was down, I, I, I do, I believe that everyone was praying for her, everyone was praying for us as a family, we survived that journey home, and, um, yeah. and, and it's been my church family for the last 10 years. My husband, obviously, he's, he, he doesn't leave. He wants to come next week to, you know, and it's all no, no small part. Everyone here has just been so amazing over the last 10 years. Erin, um, I'd only known you six months when my, when Phil's dad, granddad, um, grandma died in Leeds and she was the only, she was, uh, we were her nearest relatives and you just went up to Leeds and did the funeral for us you know that was just the most incredible thing for us as a family that my husband who doesn't believe he he got to see Christ in action he was just it was just amazing there's been so many things that have happened over the last few years that you've been the biggest support for um and I'm just really grateful that this is my church family and it won't change in January no matter what because this has been my been my support mechanism for the last 10 years um, and I'm so grateful so yeah uh, for our for our encouragement this is Slavka's testimony so Slavka writes I grew up in a Catholic environment in Slovakia where we regularly went to church every Sunday our life was religious but not a life where Jesus was saviour I did not realise my sinfulness and I thought I was living a good life. I tried to live so that in the eyes of other people I, I was okay, but the truth is my heart was corrupt and full of sin. I graduated from university, I had a good job and I had a boyfriend and I wanted to, to start a family and start my own business. I had little time for God other than on a Sunday. I didn't do anything bad to anyone and everything was fine. One Sunday, I was home alone, and I felt lonely, and I, I didn't want to be by myself that Sunday. A friend had invited another friend of mine to a Christian meeting, and I asked if I could go along and join them. They were very surprised when I, I asked if I could join them, said Slavka. He was pleasantly surprised. Slavka just went along to kill some time. But it was a day when I was at, meet, at that meeting, that my whole life turned to my feet. Yes, to my feet, not upside down, because she'd been living in a world upside down. But when she found Jesus, then the world was set the right way up. 
What actually happened that day? Well, the pastor began praying, and that was something new to me because it was a conversation with God that was very real in that prayer. I never experienced that before. I didn't have this type of relationship with God. To talk to God in prayer, that was something new. Then I began to have questions in my mind, but of course, nobody knew what the questions were. And I thought, why should I trust this pastor? And immediately he answered me from the front and said, don't believe me, believe what is in the Bible. And I thought, why should I trust the Bible? And the pastor immediately said, the Bible is God's word written by people through the Holy Spirit over 1,400 years on three different continents of Asia, Europe and Africa and people with such varying education as, as a doctor to a fisherman and a shepherd. These people who wrote the Bible had never met and yet they wrote exactly the same things about God. And I thought, why should I pay attention to this? I'm fine. I've done nothing wrong to anybody. And the pastor said, the pastor quoted from Romans 3 verse 10, as it is written, there is no one righteous, not even one. Slavka thought, what? I don't understand. And the pastor said, for it is by grace you are saved through faith, not of yourself. It is the gift of God. And I thought, what shall I do? And the pastor answered her. He said, Acts 16 verse 31 says, Believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. I went home confused but also encouraged. And for the first time in my life, I prayed on my own. I prayed in my own words and I wept for my sins and I confessed my sins to God and asked for forgiveness. Then I had a peace in my heart that I had never experienced before. I began to read the Bible, God's Word, and I started to go to the Bible study on Sunday afternoons. I had many questions and I was confused by what I found, but also many con confused by things that I did not find in the Bible. I was baptised and everything turned out well and lived happily ever after. She says, no, it didn't. No, 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 it wasn't like that. God didn't promise that all our problems would be solved, but he did promise that he would be with us in our pain and suffering and help us to get through them. I have quite advanced rheumatism. I have not recovered from that. I lost my job. I lost my friends in Slovakia. People laughed at me, but I knew that God was with me in all of this. I found peace that is greater than all human understanding. I have the promise of eternal life. So I'm not afraid to die because I know that I will be with Jesus. It's easy to be preoccupied by our own problems and forget about the world that needs to know Jesus. Jesus gives hope to the hopeless, love to the unloved, and joy to those who are restless. God who is a personal God through our Lord Jesus, wants us to follow him in our lives. And I thank God that he made himself known to me and I can praise him for all my life here on earth and with him one day in heaven. Amen. Thanks, Slavka. That was beautiful. Thanks, Aaron, and good morning. Um, Jenny and I started coming to uh, Springwood in 2014 at the time that the previous pastor was leaving, because the church at that point was a, a daughter church, a church plant from uh, Woodlands, and I was the elder with responsibility for employment issues, so I was heavily involved in that, and also then in the recruitment uh, of, of Aaron. Uh, we, we agreed to come, Jane and I agreed to come for 18 months, and some seven years later, uh, we're still here. Um, and I think it's fair to say that through that time, we've seen the fragility of the church, but also the many blessings uh, as well as we've seen the church in many sense punching above its weight. Darren's reminded us of some of the events we've put on in terms of Easter cafes and Christmas cafes and uh, the summer holiday clubs and a whole variety of, of different things that the church has put on to reach out to the people of, uh, uh, of Oakwood. I think it's very easy to compare small church and large church and clearly there are pros and cons of both. 
Um, and it's easy to look at the, the, the advantages of large church, you know, you know, the fact that Woodlands has more musicians that they know what to do with, and they're on a rota basis, and, and we struggle to have uh, music here. Uh, children's classes for all different age groups and so on. And yet, one of the things that God has taught me, I think, over the last seven years is that in a small church, you know, punching above its weight, you know, there's no room for passengers, and, and Springwood has been a, an excellent example of a church really pulling together, all working together, all with that sense of, uh, of community, of being together, as being a church family uh, working uh, together. And uh, when things are needed to be done, Everyone has pulled together, everyone's got on board, and everyone has made it uh, happen. And, and that's been a real joy and, and a, real, uh, a real treasure. And that's one of the things, certainly, I will remember as we go back to uh, Woodlands uh, from January. It's been a, a learning experience being part of a, of, of a, of a, a, a church family uh, like this. And I hope the lessons from that I won't forget as we move back into what is a larger church. So uh, thank you all. My turn then. Um, I think I would sum up our, our seven years at Springwood with the word privilege. Privilege. Being pastor of Springwood Church has been an immense privilege, and I have to say, a constant delight. I love you folks. I love you. And I have to say that we have been greatly privileged to be on the receiving end of much love from you which we thank you for. Particularly in these, these last couple of months when it's been apparent that Springwood is no longer viable, the new practical demonstrations of love and encouragement have made all the difference in these difficult days. You know, a couple of years ago I used to lead uh, assemblies in, the, in this hall, uh, whole school assemblies, and I would always introduce myself as Aaron, the pastor of the church that meets in in this hall here on Sundays and I used to tell the children every time that I have the best job in the world that I get paid for studying the Bible by myself and then I have the immense privilege of teaching people who know Jesus more about him but also people like the children of telling them about Jesus for perhaps the first time there is no greater privilege than that what a thrill. So Lynn and I came here in March 2015, nearly seven years ago, and I'm still convinced that we were stitched up. The very first preaching series was Colossians, and I was given uh, Colossians chapter 3, and the very first uh, sermon that I was expected to preach here in the series was on sexual purity. Now, I don't have a problem preaching on sexual purity, but from the very first one... I was stitched up, guys. I was stitched up. Um, during our seven years here, we've seen people come to faith. And that is just the greatest thrill, the, the, the greatest privilege to see the Holy Spirit at work here. That's more exciting than any white knuckle ride at Alton Towers. We've had loads of baptism services, which is always so exciting. We've been high on the list when when people have had new babies, we've been high on the list. Mum, dad, brother, sister, pastor. We've been on the high on the list to be informed that people have had new babies, which is such a, such a privilege. We've held Thanksgiving services for a number of babies, including Rose and Evan, who are here today. What a privilege that is. I've been welcomed into the most intimate parts of your life. As some of you face bereavement or family issues or issues at work and it's a it's a huge privilege to be able to walk alongside you as you go through the the deepest valleys of your life i've had the privilege of teaching you the bible week in week out and seeing your lives change through the holy spirit i've seen you grow in the way that you show practical love for one another as you as you, you practice as, as you love one another as you practice hospitality together as you you stand with one another through the ups and downs of life as you forgive one another as you as you pray with one another as you pay passionately for your friends and your families conversion as we see and see you being generous to the work of god in this church and the advancement of the gospel in derby and across the world 
you've seen you grown in your love for Jesus. What a delight that's been. The elders for the last seven years meet monthly. It's been my responsibility and privilege to, to lead the elders meetings and then the wider leadership team meetings. And they've always been a delight. Like some of you, I've been in churches where leadership meetings have drained people and we've been reduced to tears. Not at Springwood. Not at Springwood. I'm always grateful for your, for your continued love and support and wisdom, gentlemen. What great leaders I've been privileged to work alongside. I have to say that Lynn has been my constant support and encouragement, more so than ever in these difficult weeks recently. The Lord has been gracious in that while one has been down, the other has been slightly up. And then within an hour or two, it'll be the other one. The Lord's been gracious in that way. Lynn is a, a wonderful gift to me, and I, I hope you all appreciate what a, a gift she is to, to you all. Despite her poor health, she's loved you, encouraged you, and worked hard for the gospel here. It's a, a huge privilege to share my life with this godly woman. I'm grateful to the, to the Lord Jesus who saved me out of my sins and called us to Springwood. My Lord and my Saviour has been so good to us, so good to us in ways beyond a sinner like me deserves. He showered me with grace upon grace, set my feet on a solid rock that is Jesus Christ. And if I've ever, ever done anything of any use at Springwood, then it's because the Holy Spirit's been working through me so that the praise and glory goes to him. It's Jesus who died for me and loves me. There's no greater privilege to, to, than to be called a child of the living God. I, I kind of effectively stand down as pastor next week, though I will be taking an active part in the gospel community that will be starting in January. So I'm immensely grateful to you all, our church family, to Almighty God who brought us here. May all the glory for the good things he's done in Springwood and through Springwood go to him. Close with some life-changing verses from Ephesians chapter 2, which says, Because of his great love for us, God, who is rich in mercy, made us alive with Christ, even when we were dead in our transgressions. It is by grace you have been saved. And God raised us up with Christ and seated us with him in the heavenly realms in Christ Jesus in order that in the coming ages of it, he might show the incomparable riches of his grace expressed in his kindness to us in Christ Jesus. For it is by grace you have been saved. And this is not from yourselves, it is the gift of God. Not by work so that no one can boast. Praise his holy name.